Hello Year 7 and we're back now for our third lesson on King Edward and Llewellyn. So as a starter to this lesson, I'd like you to look at the picture shown and answer these three questions. What do you think is happening in this picture? Where do you think this picture is taking place? And why do you think there are so many people? So if you'd like to pause this, you can do it in the worksheets provided, your books, or on paper. So if you'd like to pause the video now and complete that task. We should be back now from finishing answering those questions. So we're going to move on. So this lesson should be about the death of Llewellyn the last. So you can see here three different pictures showing his death. So Llewellyn's death. Here's the map you may have noticed from the end of last lesson where the Battle of Orerwin Bridge took place where Llewellyn was killed. So the facts we know about Llewellyn's death, on, it occurred on the 11th of December, 1282, at Orerwin Bridge near Bilth Wells during the Battle of Orerwin Bridge, and his head was sent to London. So there are many stories behind Llewellyn's death. One story of how he dies says that Llewellyn's army begins to retreat during the battle and Llewellyn becomes separated from his army. So Llewellyn is then killed by Edward's soldiers who don't realize who he is. The next day then, Llewellyn is identified and his head is cut off and sent to London. Your first task for this lesson is to look at these five sources about Llewellyn's death and then fill in this table. So you have, this table is available on the worksheet or you can draw it in your books or on paper. And I want you to decide whether for each source, whether it states that Llewellyn was beheaded or stabbed with a spear or lance. And I want you to explain your choice. So here we've done the first one for you. So source A, a chronicle in 1312 by a monk called Walter of Gainborough. In that, it says that Llewellyn was stabbed with a spear and lance. And we've explained this choice because Llewellyn was stabbed with a spear by Stephen de Frankton, who didn't recognize him at first. So what I'd like you to do now is fill in the rest of that table after looking at the sources on the previous slide. So if you'd like to pause the video now and go and complete that task. So you should have completed that task now, and we'll move on to the next. This picture we showed as a starter. So it is Llewellyn's head being displayed. We look at so many people there, and because London was a city, we think this must be while it's being paraded in London. It's put on the end of a pike or a long spear, to be displayed so everyone can see it in celebration that they have defeated Prince of Wales, Llewellyn. So your second task. I want you to read this source written by Monk Florence from Worcester. And I want you to use this source to write down and describe what happened to Llewellyn's head after he was killed. Again, you can do this on the worksheets in your books or on paper. So if you want to pause the video now and complete that task. So now you've completed that task. There are other legends, so tales or stories that may or may not be true about Llewellyn's head. The first is that while being paraded through London, Llewellyn's head was given a crown made of ivy. This mocked the Welsh, showing that Llewellyn had been a king of outlaws and, or criminal and bandits. 
After being taken to the Tower London, Llewellyn's head was put on a pike above Traitor's Gate that you can see in the photo. That's Traitor's Gate these days, but that was the gate they used to take everyone who was going to be kept at the Tower of London. And in the second picture, you can see how the heads were displayed above Traitor's Gate. At the bottom of the picture, you can see the turrets of, of the castle walls. And in the left-hand picture, you can see where that might have been. And it's suggested that Llewellyn's head was kept there on a pike for 15 years. Now, this may have been an exaggeration. It probably wasn't true, but that is one of the stories of what happened. So your third task, I want you to answer these three questions. First of all, why do you think Edward ordered Llewellyn's head to be paraded in front of A, the people of North Wales, and B, the Londoners, people living in London. So the second question, I want you to imagine you are a Welsh person who lives in London and you see Llewellyn's head paraded past you and all the English people celebrating. I want you to write down a description of how that makes you feel. And thirdly, I want you to explain how do you think Llewellyn died and explain the answer behind it. You've read many sources now through this lesson on Llewellyn's death. I want you to decide which one you think is the, re the way Llewellyn died and explain why you think that. So if you'd like to pause the video now and go and complete that task. You should be back now from completing task three. So a final task now. I want you to get to Llewellyn's castle in Snowdonia. In order to get to his castle, you need to go through these steps. And in the bottom row, I want you to put thing, three things I have learned about Llewellyn the last, King Edward the first, and the war between them. Then in the next row up, I want you to write two questions you still have about Llewellyn the last, the King Edward I, or the war that happened between them. And finally, in the top row, when you get to the castle, I want you to write one thing that you've really enjoyed during these lessons about Llewellyn and Edward. And so that is our final task of this lesson. And it is now the end of the lessons of Edward and Llewellyn. I hope you've all enjoyed, and I shall see you again.